This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagede Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagede Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Glory, hallelujah, praise God. What a great night, praise God. What a great privilege uh, to have the service uh, tonight. And I want to thank you for joining us. It is always a pleasure to have you uh, connected with us wherever you are at home, at work, in your car, or wherever you are uh, connected with our service tonight. We are so glad, we are so pleased to have you. And thank you for taking time to be part of today's uh, Bible study. Glory be to God. And I want to thank our pastor also for uh, this great platform and privilege. Glory be to God. And as you know that uh, uh, we are rounding up, we are wrapping up our teaching series, the uh, What Do You See? This is going to be part four. This is the final part. And today we are drawing a conclusion on this exciting teaching series. But before we do that, I always love us to uh, spend a few minutes in prayer together uh, at the beginning of our Bible study. So wherever you are, can you join me? Let's begin to give God glory. Let's give Him praise for the gift of life. Let's celebrate Him for eternal life, abundant life that we have in Christ. Father, we thank You. Father, we give You glory. Lord, for this privilege, for the gift of life that you have given us. And Lord, for the gift of abundance, eternal life in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you because of this platform, because of this privilege, because of this opportunity that you have given unto us to look into your world, to study your world with your wonderful people How there. Father, we say thank you. Glory be to God. We worship you tonight. We are still giving thanks to God as you turn your Bible with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Make sure you have your Bible with you and of course your notebook, your writing material. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. And I love to read from New Living Translation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 uh, verse 17. Now this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. So if you belong to Christ Jesus, the scripture says you are a new person. And listen to what he says, that the whole life is gone. A new life has begun. The whole life is gone. So if anyone is in Christ, if anyone I believe in Christ, the Bible says his whole life is gone. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, aren't you glad that your whole life is gone? I am so glad that my whole life is gone. That my whole miserable, sinful life is gone, is gone. Glory be to God. That's my whole wretched life. That's my whole bankrupt life is gone, gone forever. Glory be to God. The day I met Jesus, the day Christ came into my life, a new life began. Glory be to God. A new life, an abundant life, eternal life, God's own kind of life. Glory be to God. Exciting life. Oh, dynamic life started supernatural life. Aren't you glad? Let's celebrate God for that. Father, thank you. Thank you for my whole life is gone. I am no longer a slave to sin or a captive of the devil. My whole miserable, wretched, poor life is gone forever. Thank you Lord for this new life you have given me. Thank you for this new life that I started the very day that I had an encounter with God. Thank you, Lord, for now I have an exciting life. I have a dynamic life. I have a bright life. I have a full life, an abundant life. Glory be to God. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of having and starting a new life in Christ. Are you glad? Open your mouth and thank the Lord for a privilege of having a new life 
of starting a new life in Christ. Glory be to God. We are still praying. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. And I love to read easy to read version. And then I move to Colossians 3 verse 3. Uh, message Bible. So let's start. 1 Corinthians 1 9. We are still praying. Thank God for the new life in Christ Jesus. God is faithful. He's the one who has chosen you to share life with his son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Do you know what? The new life I have now is the very life of Christ. It's the life that I share with Christ. Glory be to God. What an awesome privilege to share same life with Christ Jesus. I love the way Colossians 3, 3 message Bible render it. He said, your whole life is gone. Colossians 3 verse 3 message Bible. Your whole life is gone. Your new life, which is your real life. Even though invisible to spectators, is Christ, is with Christ in God. He is your life. Glory be to God. So I do not just share life with Christ. Christ is my real life. Christ is my life. I want you to open your mouth tonight and ask the law to help you to see, to know, to understand very well. This new life that you share with Christ, that is your prayer tonight. Say, Father, open my eyes, law, that I may see, that I may know, that I may be able to comprehend this new life, this abundant life, this eternal life, this life of the Son of God that I now have. Father, open my heart. Lord, help me to be able to grab this life. It takes understanding that life to walk in it, to enjoy it, to experience it to the mass. And so let's ask the Lord to help us to grasp it, to help us to know it, to understand it, so that we can walk in that life, so that we can express and manifest that life even to the full. Father, thank you. Glory. Hallelujah. Last day tonight, I want you to ask the Lord, I want you to open your mouth and you declare that I have the life of God. I, I share life with Christ. Christ is my life. And from tonight on, I shall begin to enjoy. I shall begin to express. I shall begin to manifest this new life that I share with Christ. Open your mouth and boldly confess that. Boldly declare that. I have new life. I share new life with Christ. Christ is my life. And from tonight on, in the name of Jesus, I enjoy this life. I walk in this life. I express this life. I experience this life. I manifest this life to the max in the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. What a privilege. To have a new life in Christ. What an awesome opportunity that we now share the same life with Christ Jesus. Oh, what a great honor to have Jesus Christ as my life. And so, Father, tonight, as we come to look into the power of liberty, this is our desire, Father, that our eyes and our mind and our heart will be enlightened, will be opened by the truth of your word. We pray, oh God, that the Spirit of the Lord will reveal clearly to all Jesus Christ, our life, Father. And Lord, we ask, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, Jesus, as we receive your word, with joy, with excitement, with meekness, with faith tonight. Lord, that your word will heal, your word will deliver, your word will set free. That your word will wrought diverse miracles, even in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we'll embrace you tonight. We embrace your word, we celebrate you. We'll embrace your ministry tonight. That you walk freely in our heart and in our mind, in our soul and in our body. And let Jesus be glorified. And the church of God be edified and strengthened. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Once again, thank you so much for being part 
of today's uh, service, our Bible study. Of course, you know it is Bible study, and we have been on a teaching series, very beautiful teaching series that we call What Do You See? And so this is the final part, What Do You See? Part 4. This is the final part, and I need you to pay close attention as I wrap up uh, this teaching series. Of course, you remember uh, what we have been exploring is how to answer the question that God posed to Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, 11 and 12. New King James, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. And verse 12, then the Lord said to me, you have seen where, for I am ready to perform my work. You have seen well. You you have seen well, and because you have seen well, I am ready to perform my work. Very important. And so our desire, our goal, our expectation is that through this teaching series, we also will come to a place that we be able to see well. Glory be to God. And of course, at this final part of this teaching series is going to be focused on this. We'll be exploring, we'll be answering this this question, how do I see well? Of course, you know, we have answered what it means to see well. We have answered why to see well. And today, the focus is on how to see well. Glory be to God. And of course, being uh, the final part, uh, let me quickly uh, see if I could summarize some very important truths that we have examined in the course of this teaching series. Of course, we started saying looking is a function of the eyes, but seeing is a function of the heart and mind. Many people look. Only few people see, and fewer people see very well. And of course, we have learned that it takes a regenerate heart and a renewed mind to see well. Because sin is a function of the heart and the mind. So if your heart is still darkened and your mind is darkened, there is no way you are going to see well. So it takes a heart that is recreated, regenerated, a new heart, and a mind that is renewed or being renewed by the word of God to see well. And don't forget we say seeing implies knowing. So when we say seeing well, we are saying knowing well, we are saying perceiving well, we are talking of understanding well. So seeing is comprehending, is you knowing, is you perceiving, is you understanding. And of course, we say seeing well is seeing exactly what God sees. So when I see exactly what God wants me to see, I am seeing well. And of course, we also say seeing well is seeing exactly how God sees. So when I see how God sees things, then I am seeing well. And of course, we know that God does not see as men see. Men see in the flesh. Men judge and evaluate according to the flesh according to worldly values and standards. But God sees in the spirit. God looks at the earth. God judges. God evaluates man according uh, to the earth. And of course, we began to look at why it is absolutely necessary to see where. And we said it takes seeing where to live where. It takes seeing where to enjoy where to express or manifest where the new life that we now have in Christ. And of course, we said it is impossible to attain your full potentials as a new creation in Christ without you being rooted in your new identity in Christ. There's no way I'm going to walk and function and operate as a new creation in Christ without being secure, rooted in my new identity, which is Christ Jesus. We also said uh, you cannot walk in the full reality of your inheritance, the inheritance you share with Christ, without you actually seeing well, knowing well, or understanding well the inheritance you share with Christ. So you need to know what, 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 is, what is Christ's inheritance that you share with him. You've got to see it, to understand it, if you are going to enjoy it. And of course, we say Christ's inheritance, the inheritance of Christ that we share with him consists of Christ's blessing 
sins, Christ's suffering, and of course, Christ's mission. And what is Christ's mission? Simply put, it is to seek and save sinner. Glory be to God. We also say you cannot be fully devoted to Christ's ministry without seeing yourself as Christ's mission partner. You've got to see that God has adequately anointed you, enabled you, equipped and furnished you to fulfill your role as Christ's mission partner. And of course, you also need to begin to see people, sinners, the unsaved, the unbeliever, through the lens of Christ, seeing them as Christ see them. Glory be to God. I could go on and on. I would like to encourage you to listen again to those uh, 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 teaching, part one, part two, part three. Glory be to God. And last week we began uh, to answer the question, how do you see well? How do I begin to see well? Pastor, now that I know uh, what it means to see well, now that I understand why it is crucial, why it is critical, why it is necessary to see well, I want to know how to begin to see well. I want to see well. What do I need to do? Glory be to God. And that is going to be our focus and our emphasis tonight. Glory be to God. And last week, began by saying that if you want to help someone to see where, uh, one of the things you need to tell the person is you need to ask and encourage the person to turn his eyes or mind away from whatever he's seen before. Alright? So if I'm going to see where, I need to be lesser focused on one particular object. So you cannot see where if you are divided in your focus, in your attention. So if I want you to see exactly what I'm seeing and how I am seeing it, I will ask you to, to turn away, to turn your mind, your attention from whatever you have seen before so that you can focus on what I want you to see. And of course, I'm also going to help you uh, to see what I'm saying by inviting you or bringing you to stand where I am standing, all right? Your location is very, very crucial, relevant to your vision. So you've got to be standing at the right place for you to see exactly what I want you to see. And of course, I will also help you by directing your attention towards the very object I want you to see. So I'm going to point at what I want you to see. I'm going to point it out amongst uh, the crowd and I'm going to describe to you what I want you to see. And the only way you will end up seeing well or seeing exactly what I want you to see and how I want you to see is if you pay attention to my instruction, is if you listen to me, if you agree with me, turn your eyes and mind from what you were saying, come to where I am so that you can see, and of course look at the direction that I'm pointing to, and focus on the object I wanted to focus on, and pay attention to my description of that object. And do you know what? That is exactly what God has done for us to help us to see where so in seeing where, pay close attention, don't miss it. How do I see where? I need to understand uh, what God has already done in order for me to see where. And of course, last week I told you there are three major ways that God has helped us. So there are three things that God has done to enable us to see well. And we need to respond well to that. So seeing well is not waiting on God to do something. Are you paying attention? Alright. Our pastor has been saying this through over and over. That God, we are not waiting on God. God has done his part. The same thing is applicable in this teaching series. So in seeing well, you are not waiting for God to do something to you or for you to see where everything that God needs to do for you to see where he has already done it. So what do I need to do to see where I need to respond. I need to believe what God has done. I need to listen to God. And that is what we are exploring today. Glory be to God. And Abraham is going to be our case study. So let's go to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 
chapter 15, and I'm going to read the first six verses. Genesis 15, uh, 1 to 6, New King James. In this uh, passage, we are going to see three major help, three major things that God did to Abraham, or for Abraham, to enable Abraham to see where, and of course we're going to see how Abraham responded, and that is what we also need to do. Are you with me? Are you ready for that? Genesis 15, let's start from verse 1. After this thing, that is, after rescue, Abraham's nephew was, uh, uh, Lot was rescued. After Abraham encounter with Mekisedek, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid. Abraham, I'm your shield, your exceedingly great reward. God is saying, Abraham, I am for you. I am all yours. All right, Abraham, I am your inheritance. That's what God is saying. You've got me. And look at verse 2. Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me? Sing, I go childless. And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. So we see here, God told Abraham, I'm your inheritor. All that you want, all that you need is in me. And I'm offering myself to you. And do you know what? Because Abraham was not seeing what God just said. Or he didn't see what God just said. He was not having on God's lens. He was not seeing through God's eyes. Abraham was focusing on himself. He was focusing on on his limitation, on his challenge in the flesh. And all that Abraham could see was going childless. Seeing I go childless. Now the same way with us, if we do not put on God's lens, all that we'll be focused on is our challenges. All that we'll be focused on is our limitations in the flesh. And verse 3, then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my ear. So Abraham said, God, can you please put on my own lens? All right. Can you imagine? Abraham is asking God, put on my lens. I want you to see exactly what I'm seeing. Look, God, I am going childless. I am barren. I am unfruitful. I'm going to die without a child. All that I've labored, all that you have given to me is going to the chief servant of my house. Now, is that not what we also do at times? We ask God to see through our eyes. We ask God to see through our lenses. We ask God and say, you know what? Take off your lens, God. You are not seeing what I'm seeing. Put on my own lens and see. But listen to me. That is not the way to see well. You are, we are our goal is to see as God sees. Uh, seeing well is seen through the lens of God, through the eyes of God. So what do we have to do? We've got to get rid of our own lens. Because when we see through our own lens, we will only see what we cannot do. We will only see our impossibility, our limitation, our shortcoming, our weaknesses. We only see in the natural. <coughs> we will only see in the flesh. We will only see according to the flesh, according to the worldly standard. And look at the first help that God rendered to Abraham. And that is also what God has done for all. And of course, we began to examine this last week. God sent his word to Abraham. God sent his word. And look at that in verse 4. As we began to see how God helped Abraham to see where. Genesis 15, we are at verse 4 now. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying... This one shall not be your heir, that is Eliezer, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. So the word of the Lord came to Abraham to correct his vision. Alright? So please listen to it. This is important. So God offer Abraham his own lens. God offer Abraham his own glasses, his own binocular. God is saying, Abraham, I want you to see through my lens. Take off. Get rid of the human lens that you have on. Get rid of the natural lens. Get rid of the lens of the flesh. Get rid of the lens of this world. Get rid of the lens that other people borrow you. Here is my own lens. So you need to know that, that God's word is God's own lens. So what do we need to do? We need to put on the lens of God. We need to see in the light of God. Glory be to God. We've said a lot about that last week. 
And I'm just trying to re-emphasize that truth. So seeing well is seen through the lens of God's word. That is important. Seeing well is seen in the light of God. Is seen by the light of God's word. Is seen through the light of God's word. So I, that is what I said last week. There is no way you will be able to see well with a Bible closed. All right. Now, if you want to see where, you need to get serious with the world. You need to sit down. You need to make time daily to read the world, to imbibe the world, to listen to the truth. Not just any word, but the gospel truth. All right. You need to listen to the truth of God's word. You need to meditate in it diligently, consistently. Do you know why? Because the word of God will correct your vision. Because when you begin to look uh, into the word of God, and imbibe the word of God, the light is going to flood your mind. The light is going to flood your soul because the word of God is light. Psalm 119 verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. So the word is light. The truth of God's word brings light. Glory be to God. Now, Message Bible, Psalm 119 verse 105, By your words I can see, by your words I can see where I am going, by your word I can see. I love the way it is to read version pools, Psalm 119 verse 130, As people understand your word, it brings light to their life. So it is important, and we cannot overemphasize that. You will not be able to see where if you do not know what God has said in his word about you now in Christ. What God has said about your situation. So, seeing well, alright, is you accepting what God said about you in the world. Accepting what God said about your situation in the world. Glory be to God. So you need to get rid of whatever other lens you are using. And so all that you use is the lens of God's word. Oh, the doctor's report is not looking good. The diagnosis is not looking well. But you know what? I see my healing in the world. And that is the way I prefer to see myself. By his stripes, I am healed. That is putting on the lens of God's word. Glory be to God. I see in the word of God that the word of God say, my sickness is not unto death. And do you know what? That is the way I choose to see this sickness. It is not unto there. I am going to outlive this sickness. I'm going to survive this sickness. I'm going to be restored to health. My health is going to spring forth speedily. But why am I talking like that? That is what I see. I choose to see through the lens of God's word. I choose to see in the light of God. So whatever situation I find myself, whatever challenge, whatever difficulty, you know what? I go into the world and I understand what God has said about it. And do you know what? I see that situation through the lens of that world. Do you understand? I see the situation, my challenge, in the light of God's world, by the light of God's world, through the light of God's world. I can never overemphasize the importance of that. So how does God help us to see? He sent his word to all. So what do I need to do? Respond to it like Abraham did. What do I need to do? Take the word of God and wear it as lens. Choose that the only way you are going to see yourself, see your challenges, is through the lens of God's word. It's in the light of God's word. If the word of God say, yes, that is what I'm going to stick to. If the word of God say no, that is what I'm going to stick to. Glory be to God. So number two, how did God help Abraham? Because that is the way God is helping us today to see well, to see as he sees. So let's jump right uh, to verse five now. All right. Now, so pay attention to this. We are looking at three major ways God help us to see. And we are looking at Abraham as case study. Three ways God helped Abraham to see when he was seen wrongly. He was seen himself going childless, being unfruitful. God offered him his own land by sending his word to him. Number two, verse five. 
Then he brought him outside. That is, God brought him outside. God brought Abraham outside. That is very instructive. That is very important. So Abraham could not see well, or rather Abraham did not see well until God changed his location. God literally, God actually changed his position. I've told you, your position is very, very critical to your vision, to, to your spiritual side. So God brought Abraham out in order for Abraham to see exactly what God was saying or what God was saying. And do you know what? That is exactly what God has done for me. That is what God has done for you if you're a child of God. God has actually changed your spiritual location. God has changed your spiritual position. God has changed your spiritual geography so that you can see as he sees. That is important. You need to understand that salvation, being born again, being regenerated is actually a spiritual translocation. It's actually God changing you. Glory be to God. God changing your position. So being saved actually is a change of spiritual location. It's not just a change of spiritual condition. It's actually a change of spiritual position. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? Do you know what God has done? So that I can see where he brought me out from under the dominion, power of Satan, of darkness. And he brought me into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians chapter 1, 12, 13, 14. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us. Into the kingdom of the son of his law. That what convey means he literally changed our location. He took us from where we were and he brought us to where he wanted us to be. Glory be to God. So in order for me to, to, to see as God see, do you know what? God brought me to where he is. Glory be to God. God brought me into where he is. Hallelujah. He changed my position. So he brought me from under the dominion of darkness. He brought me into his kingdom. You know what he did? He raised me together with his son Jesus and he exalted me and made me see together with Christ Jesus at his right hand. Now this is important. Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, even when we were dead, Ephesians 2, 5, 6, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together. Look at that, Ephesians 2, 6, very closely. He raised us up together. He made us sit together in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. So I have an advantage of position. Pay attention now. I am no longer on the floor. I'm no longer under the dominion of the devil. I'm no longer a captive in the kingdom of darkness. I'm no longer a slave to the devil. Do you know what? God has made me a king. Are you listening to me? God made me to sit together with Christ. And look at where I am sitting at the right hand of God. And do you know where that is? Far above all principalities and power. Far above all dominions. Far above every throne and kingdom. Far above the highest mountain. Glory be to God. And do you know what I need to do? If I need to see where, I need to believe what God has done. I need to see myself that truly I am seated together with Christ at the right hand of God and every other thing is under me. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So when a giant stands on my way, I need to see the giant not from this hour, but from the realm, the heavenly realm where I am seated in Christ. And when you look at the giant from that place, giant is just like a grasshopper. It's just like a hand. So when they say mountain, when they say heal on my way, I don't see it as natural men we see. You know I see it just as God we see. Why? Because I am seated together with him. Because of that location, that position where I am. That is how to see well. So you need to believe that you are seated together 
in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are the right hand of the Father, we cry. You are not a slave. So don't, don't see a slave as captive anymore. Do you know how a slave and a captive of the devil see? All they see is just the work of the devil. All they see is what the devil is doing. All they see is just demons, oppression and all that. No, no, I am not in that place anymore. I am not there anymore. I am a king reigning together with Christ on the throne. How do I see? I see as king. Glory be to God. I see as one who have authority. I see as one who the devil is really under his feet. It doesn't matter what confronts me. It doesn't matter what stand on my way. I see it as under my feet. Glory be to God. Do you know what? That's exactly the way Joshua saw. Alright, you remember that Joshua chapter 6 uh, when the Jericho was securely shot. Nobody came in, nobody went out and the wall was huge. Alright, and do you know what? God told Joshua, see, I have given this city of Jericho to you. Now God will say that is the way I see it. Even though there is a huge wall that is standing before Joshua. God said, could you lift up your eyes? I wanted to see from my position. And you know what? That's what God is saying to you uh, tonight. God wants you to begin to see from your position. Enough of seeing yourself on the floor. Enough of seeing yourself as under a cause. Enough of seeing yourself as under the dominion of the devil. No. Your location has changed. Your position has changed. You are not under. You are poor. You are on throne with Christ. See from that place. Every giant sees as a hand. When you see when you see sickness, when you see life challenges from that place where God is seated, where you are seated with Christ, it, 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 it becomes nothing to you. You will see that you will overcome it. You will see that this one is a child's play. It's nothing. Why? Because you are sit, seen from your exalted position in Christ. That is what God has done and I need to believe it. You know what Abraham did? He believed. And that is how he was able to see where I also need to believe. So my position has changed. I am not under the dominion of Satan. I am king reigning with Christ. You know what? God has also brought me out of darkness. He has brought me into his marvelous light. We are seeing how God help us to see. God brought Abraham outside. God has also done the same to me. God has done the same to you. He brought you out of darkness. First Peter 2 9 says, You are chosen generation. First Peter 2 9, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of Him who call you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So I am no longer in darkness. I am in the marvelous light of God. God has brought me me out of darkness, so I don't see as people in darkness anymore. Do you know those who are still in darkness? Those are sinners. Those are the unbeliever. They are the one with dark in mind. They are the one in darkness because they are in the kingdom of the devil, and the kingdom of devil is the kingdom of darkness. But I am in a marvelous light. Glory be to God. I am a child of light. So I see as that. I see in the light because God has brought me into his marvelous life. I don't see as unbeliever. Glory be to God. When they see death, I don't see the same. They can see that because they are in darkness. They don't even see what is coming. But I know what is coming. Glory be to God. No evil come near me. No plague come near my dwelling place. Glory be to God. That is what I see. Do you know why I am not in darkness? Oh, we don't know what is going to happen. Oh, I don't know what is going to happen to me tomorrow. We don't know what is coming on uh, uh, in the world. I know, I know, I know. You know why? Because God brought me out of darkness. He brought me into his marvelous life. So what do I know coming? Exactly what God said. Glory be to God. Only good is coming to me. Only favor, only blessing. That is what is coming to me. That is the way to see. See as one that God has truly brought out of darkness into his marvelous life. Do you know what God has already done? He brought me out of death. He brought me into life. Glory be to God. That is what God has done to help me to see where he brought me into life. I am no longer in the realm of death anymore. John 5, 24, Jesus said, Most assuredly I said to you, he will hear my words and believe, and he will send me as everlasting life. I shall not come to judgment. 
but as far from death into life. He has left the realm of death. He is now abiding in the realm of life. That is what God has done for me. I am not in the realm of death anymore. Glory be to God. I am not at the mercy of death. I need to see that my position has changed. I need to see that my location has changed. I am not under death anymore. I am not in death. I am in life. Glory be to God. So how do I see? I don't see death anymore. Those who abide in the realm of death, all they may see may be death and evil and whatever are the works of darkness. But for me, no, that's not what I'm seeing. I am seeing life. Do you know why? Because I abide in the realm of life. God has brought me out of death into life. I have passed from death into life. And what do you see in life? You see joy. What do you see in life? You see health. What do you see in life? You see strength. What do you see in life? You see progress. You see abundance. You see prosperity. You need to be conscious of this truth. You are not in death. You are in life. But when you think you are still in the realm of death, then you will see death. All that you will see is darkness. All that you will see is death. All that you will see is all that the devil is doing. But when you know you are in a marvelous life, you are in the realm of life, you are the right hand of God, then you will see exactly what God is seeing. Glory be to God. And do you know what God has also done? He brought me out of the flesh, out of Adam, and he put me in the spirit. Glory be to God. So God has brought me out of Adam, and God has engrafted me into Christ. So I'm no longer in the flesh, as it were, but I am in the spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 9, the scripture say, New King James, but you are not in the flesh. Hallelujah. But in the spirit, that which is born of the flesh is the flesh, but I am born of the spirit. Glory be to God. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's none of it. But thank God, I have the spirit of Christ. So the Bible says, I'm no longer in the flesh. I abide in the spirit. And you know what? So that means I don't see in the flesh as natural men see anymore. I don't see according to the flesh. I see see in the spirit. I see according to the spirit. That is important. So what I'm saying is it for you to see where exactly uh, what God see and how God see, you need to be conscious of this truth that God has changed your spiritual location. Your spiritual uh, placement has changed. You are not in darkness. You are now in marvelous light. You are not in death. You are now in life. You are no longer in the flesh. You are in the spirit. You are no longer in Adam. You are in Christ. You are no longer under the dominion of Satan, you are the right hand of God seated with Christ. So, when you are conscious of this spiritual uh, 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 relocation that has taken place, then you see according to the realm where God has placed you. I cannot overemphasize this. Glory be to God. So, being conscious of your new spiritual placement, your new spiritual geography, location, position in Christ, determine what you see. Glory be to God. So lastly, let's look at the third way God helped Abraham and the way God is helping us today. Glory be to God. Let's go back to that Genesis, the book of Genesis chapter 15, and let's read verse 5 again. So we are looking in how to see where. And we say in order to see where, we need to discard the lens of this world. We need to put on the lens of the word of God. Alright? God sent his word to Abraham. And Abraham received it and believed it. And he put on that lens. And then he saw himself fruitful. He saw himself as the father of many nations rather than what he was seen before as childless, as being barren alright, not only that God brought Abraham outside, glory be to God and that is exactly what God has done he has brought us outside he has brought us into light into life, he has brought us into dominion, he has brought us into the spirit, and so let's see as one whose position has changed, so look at verse 5 now, as we look at the last before we wrap up this teaching series. Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. I hope you are following Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. Then he brought him outside. So God brought Abraham outside, but that is not all. And said, look now toward heaven. Very important. 
Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendant be. Don't forget we started with Abraham not seeing well. We started with Abraham seeing himself going childless. All right. And God said, Abraham, you are not seeing well. Abraham, Get rid of the way you see. And so God sent his word and say, Eliasa will not be your here. Come outside. And God directed Abraham to what he really wanted him to see. Very instructive. Very, very important. So I told you, if I want you to see what I'm seeing, now I'm going to ask you to turn away, turn your focus from whatever you have been seeing before. I'm going to ask you to come and stand where I stand. That's exactly what God did for Abraham. And you know the next thing? I'm going to point out, I'm going to direct your focus, your eyes, your attention to whatever I want you to see. That is what God was doing here to Abraham. So God directed Abraham attention. God directed Abraham focus to what he wanted him to see. And the Bible said God directed him and said, Look to the heavens. Look, 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 Abraham. You are looking at the wrong place before. Abraham, look now to whatever. You have been looking to what you said before. Abraham, now look towards heaven and can the stars. Glory be to God. What is the implication of that? I want you to see this. This is very important. If you have not been paying attention before, please pay attention to this important truth. Glory be to God. How do I see where? Here comes the answer. God, this is important. God help us to see well today by directing our attention towards his son, Jesus Christ. That is important. God directed Abraham focus, Abraham mind, Abraham attention towards the heaven. All right. The same way today, God has called us and God has directed us to focus on his son, Jesus Christ. You will not be able to see where, if you don't direct your high pay attention, please listen to this, there is no way you'll be able to see what God sees, or see how God sees, if your eyes, if your mind, if your focus, if your attention is not directed towards Christ and Christ alone. Alone. It is only in syncrat. It is only by syncrat that you can actually see who God has made you, what God has given to you, or what God has already done in you and for you. Because all of God's work is done in Christ. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? That is important. I want to see where well, pastor. I want to see as God see. Here is God's answer. Look at my son, Jesus Christ. Look at him. Now, pay attention. Don't forget, when we say seeing Jesus, we are talking of having a revelation of Jesus. Now, pay attention to this. It is important. Now, follow me to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. So, in order to see where my whole attention, my whole, my whole mind, my whole eyes must be focused. I must be lesser Focus on Christ Jesus. Oh, there are a lot of Bible characters, all right? Oh, I have my favorite in the Old Testament. There are a lot of patriarchs in the Bible. Great prophet of all. Great apostle. But listen to this. If you want to see exactly as God sees, you have to be lesser focused on Jesus Christ alone. That is important. That is important. That must be who you focus your mind. Your, your mind must be fixated on Christ. If you are not seeing Christ, having a revelation of Christ, you will never get to know who you are. You will never get to understand your true identity. You never get to understand your full potential in, in, in Christ. Matthew 17. Look at this passage. Very instructive. Uh, so, of course, you see, this was Jesus. He took Peter, James, and John to what we call the mountain, high mountain. Uh, we're, we're looking at the transfiguration of Jesus. And look at verse 2 now. Uh, Matthew 17. 
I mean, verse 2. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, verse 3, Moses representing the Lord, Elijah representing the prophet, appeared to them talking with Jesus. These were prominent Old Testament figure. Moses, a great man of God. You remember Elijah, the prophet of fire, mighty uh, man of God. All right, verse 4. Then Peter, of course you know Peter, uh, a guy with a loud mouth, he said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here if you wish. Let us make here three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He was saying, Lord, you know what? Now, now that Moses uh, is here, Elijah is here. These are great people. Oh, what a great company we have here. So Jesus, you are in a good company. And you know what? It is good for us to be here. So we're just going to make a tree booth, a tree tent, a tree tabernacle, and then we can shuttle. We can, if I sleep with uh, 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 Moses today, then I'm going to spend some time with Elijah tomorrow. And then the next day, Jesus, don't worry, I will return to you. All right? He didn't know what he was talking about and look at what happened very instructive and while he was still speaking the rubbish he was saying is now putting Jesus and Elijah and Moses on the same pedestal now God said no 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 and while he was still speaking God would not even wait for Peter to finish the nonsense he was saying God said no while he was still speaking behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and suddenly a voice came out from the cloud God actually came down say this is my beloved son talking about Jesus in whom I am well pleased Elijah was there Moses was there but God said no no Jesus is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased hear him focus on him listen to him are you listening to what I'm talking about you must be lesser focused on Jesus that's what God is saying and you know what that is what it takes to see well you must be lesser focused on Jesus, not on any prophet. I hope oh, there are good lessons to learn. Of course, we could learn from them. But you see, you are a new creation in Christ. Are you with me? You are created after the likeness of Christ. If I keep looking at Moses, if I keep looking at Elijah, if I keep looking at Job, if I keep looking at David, if I focus on them, you know what? I will never realize my full potential. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? But when I look at Jesus, when I focus on Jesus, because as he is, so I am. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? That is important. And the Bible says in verse, let me jump there because of time. And when they are lifted up their eyes, all right, they saw no one but Jesus only. They just disappear. God say, get away, get lost from here. It must only be Jesus. That is why the Hebrew writer told us in Hebrew chapter 12, you remember in Hebrew chapter 1, there are lots of uh, great men in the Bible, great women in the Bible. We call them men in the hall of faith, the patriarchs. Now, the guy listed all of them and their achievements and what they accomplished by faith. But look at Hebrew 12 now. Look at what he began to say. Therefore, we also, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of weaknesses. These guys, they were men who did exploit by faith. They were our witnesses. But listen to what he said. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin we so easily ensnare us and let us run with endurance the red that he said before of verse 2 Hebrew chapter 12 verse 2 looking unto Jesus so we look away from Moses we look away from Gideon we look away from David we look away from Samson we look away from all those people that were listed in Hebrew chapter 11 and so who do we focus on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The word looking there is the Greek word aphoreo. A-P-H-O-R-A-O. Aphoreo. Now listen to what the Greek word aphoreo means. It means to turn your eyes away from other things and fix it on just one thing. That's what it means. So when the Hebrew writer say, looking unto Jesus, what he was say, look away from all those men that I've listed in, in chapter 11, the previous chapter, but now fix your eyes on Jesus alone. Why? Because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Hebrew 12 2, the same scripture. I want to read it in Passion Translation, and I'm going to read it in a few more scriptures before we pray. Now, Passion Translation say, we look away from the natural realm, and we fasten our gaze 
unto Jesus. We fast in our gaze unto Jesus. New Living Tradition says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfect our faith. Good News Bible says, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. God what translation says, we must focus on Jesus. We must focus on Jesus. That is how to see well. That God has directed us to Jesus. This is my beloved son. In woman, well please hear him, listen to him, focus on him because he's your identity. It's your identity. I will not be able to see where, who I am in Christ, what I have, and what I can do, my potential, my power, my glory in Christ, if I do not focus. On Christ Jesus. Because as he is, so are we in this world. That is important. First John chapter 4 verse 17. So when I say look unto Jesus, I'm not saying, of course we know that the, the whole scripture is uh, Christocentric. The Bible is all about Jesus. Jesus in types and shadows and in seed form. Uh, in, in, in the whole testament, we see Jesus in the synoptic gospel. That was God in the flesh, but with some human limitation. But you see, to actually see the revelation of the risen Jesus. Are you with me? To actually see the revelation of the exalted Jesus. To actually see the revelation of the glorified Jesus. The one who is seated at the right hand of the Father. You need to spend time in the epistle. I'm talking about from the book of Romans to Revelation. You need to look into it. When I talk about Jesus, seeing Jesus, I'm not talking about having Jesus appear to you in your dream. That is not knowing Jesus. Is somebody listening to me? I'm talking of seeing the revelation of Jesus in the scripture. That is what I'm talking about. Glory be to God. The Bible said we behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. So we behold the glory of Jesus in the mirror of the world. We see his power. We see his glory. We see his, 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 his honor, his wisdom in the epistle. And do you know what? Whatever we see in Jesus, that is what we have in us. Hallelujah. I see. So are we in this world. First Corinthians 6, 17. We are one spirit with him. Ephesians 4, 24. The Bible says we are put on the new cell. Who is created according to God's likeness. Jesus is our life. We read that earlier when we were praying. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 3. Message Bible. He is our life. So what I'm saying is this. Jesus is my identity. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Christ is our prototype. Christ is our mold. We are created after Christ. God wanted us to be like his son. In Romans chapter 8 verse 29, I read two more scripture and then we close. Romans 8 29, passion translation. For he knew, that is God knew all about us before we were born and he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. He destined us. He destined us. So my destiny, your destiny, the destiny of every child of God is to share the likeness of Christ. And do you know what? At new birth, all right? I share the likeness of Christ in my heart, in my spirit. I've got a new spirit. And that's my new spirit is one with Christ. I've got a spirit, a heart that is like Christ Jesus. And do you know what? This is what God wants. The Bible read for that. This means the son is the oldest among a vast family of brothers and sisters who will become just like him. That is talking about when he returns and my body is changed to become like that of Christ. So what am I saying to you as we wrap up this teaching series? I'm saying to you, you will not be able to see well as God sees uh, how God sees and how God wanted to see if your mind, your focus, your attention is on someone else or on something else. If all that you look at is yourself, if all that you focus on is yourself, if all that you focus on is someone else and not Jesus, you will not be able to see what God really wants you to see. 
Because you are created after the likeness of Christ. Jesus is your prototype. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And you know what? That is why we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit to reveal Christ increasingly to all. But the Holy Spirit gives us a revelation of Christ in the world, in the Bible. That is why I need to turn to the Bible. I need to open. I need to read. I need to read the epistle more and more. Because in the epistle, I see the risen Jesus. I see the exalted Jesus. I see the glorified Jesus. And as he is, so I am. So when I see Jesus, I am actually seeing myself. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Because as he is, so I am. The Bible says, I have put on Christ. The Bible says, Christ is my life. That is why God says, this is my beloved son. Hear him, listen to him, focus on him, fix your gaze on him, be fixated on him. Grow in his knowledge increasingly. Because the more I see the resurrected, the risen, the glorified cry, the more I see my new self. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? I am a new man. I am a new self. I am a new creation. I don't know how I look out. I don't know how do I look. What can I do? What are my potential? What are my ability? Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. He's your prototype. Look unto Jesus. He's your molder. God's, your destiny is to be after his likeness. And so whatever you see in him, that is what you have in him. Whatever Jesus did, that is what you can do. So seeing where is seeing Jesus. Because when you see Jesus, you are actually seeing yourself. Glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Let's just begin to give God glory. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Christ is our identity. Christ is our life. When we see him, we see ourselves. When I see Christ, I see my new self. When I see Christ, I see my potential. When I see Christ, I see my authority. I see my wisdom. I see my glory. I see all that God has given unto me. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Because you have directed our eyes and our focus and our mind and our attention on your son and in your son alone. And so, Father, Father, tonight we respond to you. And Lord, we say we will focus on Jesus. We will keep looking unto Jesus. We will keep growing in the knowledge and in the revelation of Jesus. In the grace of Jesus. We will continually, consistently, diligently look at his glory. Behold his glory. Even in the mirror of the word of God. Because we know the more we see him, the more we are seeing ourselves. Because we are created after him. Father, we thank you. And Father, we set aside every distraction. We get rid of every other lens that men have given us. The lens of the flesh. The lens of this world. Those human lens. Those natural lens. Lord, we get rid of them. And we receive your own lens, Father. We put on your lens, Father. The lens of the word of God. And from this day forward, from tonight, Huh? We see, Lord, through your lens. We see as you see. We see in the light of your world. We see by the light of your world. And we see ourselves in your son, Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that- we hope you have been challenged encouraged and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www dot the school of discipleship dot org dot uk this teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering donation and gifts from partners like you you are welcome into partnership with us today for information on how to become a partner please call one 292 9270 or 1-866-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.